Anyways, what I want to explain is that during at school, right, sometimes you get bored. I found a website called Best Useless Websites. Now, originally, I would have linked to the actual OG that I first seen on as just a useless website. But as you know, the school internet likes to block sites because we all know. Turn down the music! So, anyways, as I went to the boring website, I found a certain website inside of a website that I thought would be pretty interesting. That I thought I wanted to make a video about because the entire idea just blew me away. Also helped me get distracted from the lesson we were doing, but I mean, that's besides the point. Anyways, let me actually read about what this entire game is about. During World War I, peace broke out. It was Christmas 1914 on the Western Front. Despite strict orders not to chillax with the enemy, British and German soldiers left their trenches, crossed no man's land, and gathered to bury their dead, exchange gifts, and play games. Meanwhile, it's 2017. The West has been at peace for decades, and wow, we suck at trust. Survey shows that over the past 40 years, fewer and fewer people say they trust each other. So here's our puzzle. Why even in peacetime do friends become enemies? And why even in war times do enemies become friends? I think game theory can help explain our epidemic of distrust and how we can fix it. So to understand all this. Now, okay, the game actually talks about this later on, but I'm going to say it right in here. This is a simplified version of it and doesn't actually portray all the nuances. Like with this, you can kind of think of it as black and white thinking in a way. Just remember that there's still a lot of shades of gray in between it. It's not as simple as the game makes it show, but I do think it does get its point across and it does explain some of the things about trust. Basically what happens is, here's you, okay? Your goal is to try to get as many points as possible. If they cooperate and you cheat, you get more points. If you both cooperate, you both gain the same amount of points. Yeah, see, but let's say the players, the other player cooperates and puts in the coin, how sh what you should do. Now, you can cooperate to get the same amount of points. However, imagine that you are a blob and you're trying to get as many points as possible. Cheat. You see? Now, this is a Mafia member. This guy will always steal if I remember correctly. I Meaning, we'll be in a dilemma where no one's ever going to get the points. This one, this person's naive and is always compassionate, meaning she'll always cooperate. I mean, I can cheat as much as I want, gain as much score as needed, and always win. There you go. Now it's a cowboy man. So he'll cooperate a bit, you know? Be a bit friendly. Okay. And then cheat on the last one and gain the points we need. Detective, he's going to analyze my every move. So I'd say cooperate. Cooperate. Keep on cooperating. There you go. He's gonna cheat. Or not. I don't know as much as the game as I thought. Okay, I only played it once during school. I was also focused on other things so I couldn't play it completely. Okay, here it is. Hello, I start with cooperating afterwards. I'll cop whatever you do in the last round. Meow. Always cheats. Always cheats. I said this. Always cooperate. I know this because pink hat. Grudger. Listen, partner. If I'll start cooperating, but if you keep cooperating, if y'all cheat, I'll cheat you back till the end tarnation. Pick the first eye now. You, uh, you get the point. Okay, pause the video if you want to know that bad. The point is, is for me to sh basically showcase the game itself because I think it's an interesting game. Will anyone watch the video and know about it? No. Am I going to try anyways? Hell yes. It's tournament time. Each character will now play against every other character. That's 10 paired matches and 10 rounds per match. Who do you think will get the highest total score? Now, I already know the results, so I mean... Anyways, what's your results? Copy card versus always cheats. You may be very skeptical about the Christmas truce about World War One trenches. Surely that was just a fluke. Yes, the truce was dramatic, but it was neither unique nor unusual. Not every trench joined in peace, but it was very, pretty widespread. Many front lines came up with the idea independently, and again, despite the specific strict orders not. And in fact, even before Christmas, several front lines already had established an official secret peace. They call it the live and let live system. Basically, you don't shoot me, I don't shoot you, and this worked out in a lot of places. You may still be skeptical. Most soldiers don't spontaneously form peace with the enemy, so what's so special about trench warfare? Now, I've actually heard about stories about trench warfare and what trench warfare is, studied a bit of World War One. If we don't know what trench warfare is, imagine two lines, right? Two parallel lines. What will happen is they will have wars on either front for months. No Man's Land usually consists of bar barcades and the enemy will try to charge the defenders, which usually have machine guns. And what will happen is Either they run out of troops to charge, or the troops finally overrun them, or the other side runs out of enemy uh, ammunition. Ammunition. And as they're going to explain later on, they're going to explain what happens is that you'll see the same person each day. Yeah, you'll see the same specific soldiers every day. And it's a repeated game. All the difference it makes. Anyways, the winner is... Am I right? 
Copycat! Let's go! Copycat goes by another name. It's the golden rule. Blah, 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 blah. Tit or cat. Or live and let live. That's why peace could emerge in the trenches of war. World War One. When you're forced to play the specific game with the same specific people, blah blah blah, you get the point. Read the text if you need to. This is basically if this side wins, they'll get five troops. They'll lose five troops, they'll gain five troops. If this side loses, it shows it on the images. What am I talking about? Come on, let's just go. Now, I actually went for all cooperate, not because of a logical choice, but because I thought, but they're cooperative. They're so nice. Don't, don't bully them. They're naive. Pff, no one cares. Stupid idiot. So, guess who do you think would win? Nothing but cheaters, thieves, or lying bastards. I just completely che cheaters or cooperators or copycats. Pick it. So let's see. Ooh, the copycat did not win, but at least they did not do as bad as always cooperate. Let's do it again. Oh, look at cooperate. Someone's losing. It also seems that someone's focusing on the cooperate. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Oh no, it's against the copycats. I wonder who's gonna win. Oh. The copycats are winning? But why? By simply copying the other player's moves, the copycat can play nice with you, while always teach just teach himself. Not only that, but it means copycat can always give cheat a taste of their own medicine. So as a result, you guessed it, or not, maybe I'm going too fast, cry about it. We have this man, <laughs> Inherit to Earth. Now let's see, who do you think is going to win? Copycat again! A surprise! Sometimes few grudges may stick around because when all players except for are copycat are eliminated, the two ties. So it seems the math game theory is telling us something, that cat, cat's philosophy, do unto others as you do unto them. May not just a moral truth, but also mathematical. However, it's a fart noise, I did not know that. Look around, the world's full of total jerkbirds. If copycat is the strategy in this repeated game of trust that's so powerful that even soldiers in World War One trenches independently evolved a similar strategy called Live and Let Live, why then are there so many untrusting untrusting and untrustworthy? What's causing the epidemic of untrust? A clue in that sentence itself, it's a this repeated game of trust. So far we've only talked about changes in the players. What about a change in the game? What could this lead to? Look at all these cooperators. Who's gonna win? As you know, copyright wins handily in the long run, but under our current rules, our current rules would say is that players play against each other for 10 rounds per match. It's copyright, copycat, not copyright, what am I talking about? Still win at 7 rounds, 5 rounds, 3, 2, 1, change the number of rounds and see the slider. So I'm not going to really mess with this. One round, boom. Mistakes. Mistakes. Ooh, mistakes. I wonder what they're going to talk about. As cool as copycat is, I don't know what this hat. Dude's balling. It has a huge... Fatal weakness I haven't mentioned yet. To understand the problem, let's say two copycats are playing against each other. Being nice players. Both their first move will be... Co cooperate! And normally they just pay each back other's kindness and sing Kambaya until the end of the game. But what if we're trying to re-procate? Goodness. Uh-oh. Mistakes, miscommunication, misinterpretation, accidents happen all the time. Time in real life, but if the other person doesn't think it was an accident, oh no, times two. The others being a copycat have to retaliate, and you being a copycat as well will also have to retaliate. And just like the Hatfields and McCoys, these two copycats will spiral into an endless cycle of vanishes that start over a single mistake long ago. Very tragic. But now there are other types of players who can, who can, who can. Let's meet the new faces. <laughs> Now what do we have here? This guy, remember, not because of his cool hat, but because of, oh, mostly because of the cool hat. Also, it's a pleasing font. Look at the colors. Come on. I need to copy paste that. What What color is this, huh? Can we just, uh... So the deal with this dude is that he's a nicer version of Copycat. I cheat back only after you cheat me twice in a row. After all, the first one could be a mistake. Purr. Simpleton and ran. Doesn't matter. Read it. Alright, let's see how well these peeps do when they play in a tournament! Let's start with a dozen always cooperate versus our old winner, the fair copycat. And our three new characters, the forgiven copy kitten, the dull simpleton, and the silly rabbit. Who do you think is gonna win? I'm not showing you my answers. Alright. Get ready, He-Man. Oof. 
Your bet was closed, but no cigar. Simpleton wins. This is because Simpleton's act capable of exploiting all these cooperate. They both start cooperating, but if Simpleton makes his mistakes and cheats, then since always cooperate, never retaliate, keeps cheating them. The same thing happens before, except instead of half always cooperate, it's half always cheats. So much less forgiving. It's a hostile environment. Okay, place your bets. You're right on the money! Copy kitted Rin this time. I forgot. I, did I say place your bet? I think I did. That's surprising. With a meaner starting population, the Copy Kid is a more forgiving version of Copycat and was the most successful. Copy Kid is so forgiving, it doesn't entirely wipe out Copycat. It shares room. Come on, there's room for everyone. It don't gotta be a battle royale. In this case, a bit of communication, 5% chance of mistake each run, could lead to more forgiveness. But is this true for all levels of miscommunication? Now, let's say that there's a 50% chance of failure. What will happen to the Copy Kittens? Seems like that the entire rock. Wiped out. Now, what if it was a 49% chance? Oh, interesting. Seems like that took them a lot longer to die out, didn't they? Now, let's do what the game said, which is a 5% chance. What will happen? Oh? The odd shift? Bit weird, isn't it? The result turns out something at 0%. The fair copycat wins at 1% to 9%. The Forgiving Copy Kitten wins at 10 to 49%. Unfair, Unforgiving Always Cheat wins at 50%. Nobody ever wins. This is why miscommunication is such an interesting barrier to trust. A little bit of it leads to forgiveness, but too much and it leads to widespread mistrust. I think our modern media technology, as much as it helped increase our communication, has increased our miscommunication much more. I agree with this. Have you ever had a comment or a text that Makes you think a different way because you can't really tell a tone from a text, but ends up being much nicer than you actually expect. They weren't really trying to be rude. Now, maybe you don't know because you haven't tried actually finding out, but something interesting to talk about. Now, let's see what we've learned today. Game theory has shown us three things you need to the evolution of trust. Repeat interactions. Possible win-win wins. Low miscommunication. Miscommunicates to high trust breaks down. Read the text. And as they explain, as I was talking about earlier in the video, if you were watching, if anyone's even here, of course, real world trust is affected by much more than this. There's reputation, shared values, contracts, cultural markers, blah blah blah, let's not forget, Eastern versus Western. If there's one big takeaway from the game theory, is what a game is defines what players do. Our problem today isn't that people are losing trust, it's our environment against the evolution of trust. It that may seem cynical or naive, but we're merely products of our environments. I do think this to a certain extent, but I don't think it's entirely by our environment. It's also dependent on our reaction and the way we react, because forget, as you forget, an environment can affect us as much as we want. We're the person that actually allows the environment, our character to be affected by environment. I like to follow the stoic definition of you can control your will, and how you can be in a bad situation and still find happiness. Of course, that's simplifying it down. If you're actually interested in learning more about this, pull out, pull down, stock book, pull down. To live and let live, and it's a nice little photo. A Christmas tree is between opposing trenches. This actually made me tear. Up. It didn't tear me up, but I felt like I was gonna cry. It's such a good photo. Like imagine having two enemies becoming friends during a total war time. Art. Now, as you, this was created by Nikki Case. And this was made by their Patreon support. If you want to support them, I'd like to see other games they make. See, this man. This man looks beautiful. I love- I like the art style, it might be simplistic, but I like the little hats they drew. The hats were cool. I'm actually tempted to actually replicate their art style into a pixel art style instead, maybe make a little tiny animation. Now will I, or will I not? Who knows. Maybe I'll add the animation at the end of the video, or maybe I'll just make it a separate video entirely, because I need to make that upload schedule based. No, based, not the right word. I need it to be good. What I would like to see for someone to actually cover a video on is you don't know this, he's a psychiatrist who's been trained by the monks, if I'm correct. And I want to see this guy actually do an interpretation of the send image here.